What's up guys? Justin here with DeanieCGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out the multi-resolution modifier. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so the multi-resolution modifier works a lot the same as the subdivision surface modifier in the sense that what it does is it takes the geometry inside of your object and it subdivides it in order to give you additional geometric detail. However, what makes this modifier more powerful is you can also use that um, inside of sculpt mode. So, Let's say, for example, that we wanted to add an object. So let's add a monkey head right here. So I'm just going to add the monkey head, rotate it 90 degrees, and then let's go ahead and let's add a subdivision surface modifier to it. So if I do a subdivision surface modifier, you're going to notice that what it does is it adds more detail to this object, right? And if I bump that up, I get even more detail. However, I can't really do very much with this other than tapping into edit mode and adjusting the original geometry, right? So if you tab into edit mode, you can see this original geometry. But if I wanted to sculpt on this at all, so if I jump over into sculpt mode right here and then try to sculpt on it, notice how I'm getting a little bit of result in here, but not very much. And the reason why you're not getting very much is because what this is doing is this is basically adjusting your original mesh in here. So it's not actually editing this with the subdivision surface applied to it. It's only editing the base mesh. So that's a little bit problematic because I can't really add very much detail to this object right here. However, let's say that instead of applying a subdivision surface modifier, we had another monkey head over here. So I'm just going to duplicate this. I'll get rid of the subdivision surface modifier. Instead, I'm going to apply a multi-resolution modifier. So if I add a multi-resolution modifier, first off, notice how it initially doesn't do anything. However, there's a button down here you can click in order to subdivide this object. And so when I do that, notice how that's going to add additional subdivisions. So I can click on this button to keep adding those. Well, notice how this gives me a really smooth object. But the difference is if I jump into sculpt mode right here and try to use one of my brushes, like this one, notice how it's giving me a much more pronounced effect on the surface. So if I come in here and I use some of these different brushes, notice how I'm getting that result in here now that I was not able to get before um, with the subdivision surface modifier version of the monkey head. And so the reason for that is Blender is now allowing us to actually sculpt that subdivided surface in here. So I can use any of these brushes in order to add detail really quickly. And so notice how if I jump back into my modifiers, I can also turn this up and down. So I can adjust my sculpt mode up and down like this. So this is very effective if you do any kind of sculpting in Blender. And so notice how you can adjust the number of subdivisions that you see inside of your different viewports. So for example, if I'm just in my regular viewport, notice how I can adjust this so that it displays as lower or fully subdivided. I can also adjust how much subdivision is happening in my actual sculpt mode window, as well as how much subdivision is happening in the render mode as well. So you can use this in order to kind of balance the needs that you have for geometry that you're trying to sculpt in here with the performance that you're getting inside of your viewport and inside of Blender. This is especially important if you have something that has just a ton of vertices in it. Um, this can give you a lot better control over your final result. So there's also an option here for sculpt base mesh. And so right now what this is doing is this is allowing us to sculpt the subdivided geometry. However, if we were to check the box right here for sculpt base mesh, notice how if I mouse over this, um, this is kind of jumping two different vertices in here. That's actually going to deform the base vertices that are inside your object. So if I was to turn sculpt base mesh on, notice how the sculpt tool is currently only adding detail um, to those original vertices like this. However, if I was to turn that back off, notice how then it's going to sculpt the actual subdivided geometry. So that's going to allow you to make changes to your original base mesh. Um, the next option, optimal display, that one is going to basically not show the subdivided edges in wireframe mode. And specifically, this one really shows up in your layout mode. So if you jump in here like this, notice how if I check the box for optimal display, it's only really showing my original um, geometry that's in here. However, if I uncheck this, notice how it's going to show all of the wireframe in here. So it's just something to kind of help improve your performance. All right, so you might have also noticed that there's multiple different 
different kinds of subdivision in here. So for example, the first option is going to subdivide an object like this. Now for something like this cube, that's a little bit problematic, right? Because we don't necessarily want this cube to turn into a sphere. What we want is we just want to add geometry to our object so that we can sculpt it right? So instead of using the subdivide option, what you might use is the simple subdivision. So if I add a couple simple subdivisions like this, notice how now if I jump over into sculpt mode like this and we sculpt this object, notice how that's going to allow me to actually, um, that's going to allow me to actually sculpt on this object without it actually being affected by the subdivision, right? So basically what it did is it just added a wireframe in here um, to this cube without actually moving any of the corners around. So we can use that in order to quickly add detail to an object like this without making giant changes to the actual layout or setup of the object. Now there's also an option here for linear subdivision. Honestly, I have not been able to figure out the difference between the linear subdivision and the simple subdivision. They seem to give me a fairly similar result. So I think the linear has more to do with your current sculpted displacement, but I'm not 100% sure. So if anyone knows the answer to this one, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Um, so basically um, you've got an option down here for unsubdivide. So what it should be able to do is come back in here and unsubdivide your object. But for everything I've tried so far, I'm giving this not, not valid subdivisions found or rebuild to a lower level. So this button really isn't working for me. You're supposed to be able to unsubdivide your objects in here. Um, it's not really a massive deal to me because I can also just adjust the levels in my viewport um, and just work with it there. So not really the biggest deal in the world, but um, it is there. Um, the other one, however, the delete higher does appear to be working. So for example, let's say that I was to come in here and I was to sculpt this and I'm going to do a little bit of sculpting just on the sphere like this. So I'm just going to add a little bit of detail, nothing big. And then if I add a higher level of sculpting in here, Notice how I did that at level three. However, if I drop this back down to level two and then I click on the option for delete higher resolution mesh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna delete out anything higher than level two like this. So it'll get rid of anything that's being stored at that higher level. Now I assume that is all sitting in Blender's memory. So that's gonna be a performance saver because you're gonna have all of that additional information at those higher levels in here. Um, so if you delete those out, then it's not gonna store those anymore. So um, nothing that you had at that higher detailed in here will be stored at that higher detail level. Notice how the change that I made was reflected on here, but it's not reflected at that higher detail level that I use to sculpt this. All right, so that's kind of a high level overview of why you would use the multi-resolution modifier. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions, anything else you'd like to talk about with this modifier. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.